This is La Marca, Italy. Beautiful grasslands, rivers, framed by rolling mountains, rapeseed fields in exquisite yellow that stretch to the horizon, ruins, artisans, ancient traditions, and yet few tourists know about this place. I was fortunate to spend a few days here at Palazzo Donati, an ancient palace in the small village of Mercatello Sol Metauro. Palazzo Donati sits directly on the main square of the village, which is home to only 1,300 people. As a result, they're not really used to seeing tourists, so everybody is smiles and welcoming. Video. Eh? A video. Video. Si video. Oh dear. <laughs> Chicago. After we'd had our fill of wandering around the village, we got down to business. In the original 17th century kitchen of Palazzo Donati, Lina showed us how to make tagliatelle pasta from scratch. By now we were pretty hungry, 
So we wandered across the street to Ristorante da Uto, where owner Umberto Saki treated us to black truffle Alfredo sauce passatelli. We told him we didn't know what passatelli was, so he broke no. out the equipment. No. Okay, those yeah. are yeah. okay. okay. I have but an old one of them. The, the talk, bookie, the talk, uh, low, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's small. Okay, no normal uh, with potatoes. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So this is more. more. Okay. This is better. And this is uh, bigger. Uh, this, is bigger. Uh, this is better. Yes. Some people may not see me. This is bigger. 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 <laughs> Umberto must have figured if we didn't know what passatelli was, we might not know what truffles were, so he broke those out as well. He came around the table and scraped a few more slices on everybody's passatelli. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, good, that's good enough. <laughs> but little did we know we were in for a real treat the next morning. Umberto decided to invite us along on a hunt for truffles with his specially trained dog, Nina. He confessed that he'd hidden a couple of the truffles in the forest because it wasn't top of the season, and he wanted us to see her find one. Uh, so there are so many also because it's the first day. Oh, so these are not all things he hid. They're actually, she's finding ones that he didn't hide, yeah? Yeah, I think that's true. Huh. So the, hang on. The, the black this one. This is for the precious truffle, eh? mm, the white one. Okay. Eh, the truffles here, here or um, uh, La Terra, profuma veramente tantissimo di tartufo bianco, dove c'è il tartufo bianco. So where the white truffle is, the, the, the earth really smells in a really powerful I way. I take the, the if you don't, uh, don't see the, the truffles again, the following day we visited Antica Stamparia Carpegna, a small shop where six generations of the same family have been making prints on textiles. Si utilizza dell'aceto bianco o rosso. Allora qui un po' cambia, però il risultato sulla stampa Cuz I know that the color of the that paste is slightly different. So I thought you changed the recipe that now. It's just if you use um, uh, red vinegar or white vinegar, it might change the color of the bush mm -hmm. of the thing. The bush. But, but it wouldn't affect that. Yeah. Per uh, sapere se il color, se il nostro colore è perfetto, bisogna ascoltare. Allora questo rumore ci dice che la, la densità è giusta. Uh -huh. You've got to listen to check if the color is right. If you hear this noise, it means it's good because the, I think the word density is, is okay. It's liquid enough. And questa sarà la nostra tasca. So that's uh, that that in the pocket. Tagliato e poi si fa la tasca. Ogni volta va ricaricato il colore. Bisogna fare il disegno al centro. Shop owner Emanuele Francioni not only makes linens and tote bags and aprons, he even makes shoes. Our next stop was in the medieval town of Urbania to visit La Bottega Ceramica di Arte. During the Renaissance, Urbania was a center for Majalica ceramics. Unfortunately, that tradition was lost through the centuries. But when these two artists moved to town, they decided to resurrect it. Gilberto Galavati and Giuliano Smacchia, today are better known as the twins of ceramics. I found Gilberto in the back workroom 
painting delicate leaves on a vase. I didn't dare interrupt him until he was done. And, uh, è una è una cosa interessante perché sembra quasi antica and uh, like an ancient mode yeah interesting <laughs> particolare sì and when you do this one coat of paint and uh, you, one, you put the paint on one only one layer on the only one layer, only one layer. and then and then the glass, and then fire. And then the fire, okay, perfect. Okay, thank you very much. Our final artisan experience was a visit to the charcoal makers of the Metauro River Valley with Tonino Mosconi. Tonino was a fine art photographer who has spent years documenting this vanishing way of life. Paolo Mussinelli, one of the few remaining coalmen, demonstrated to us how they start building the giant pyres that produce the charcoal. This wood will stand at the center of the pyre. Eventually, more and more branches are stepped up until it becomes an enormous mound. The mound is then covered with dry grass and with a layer of dirt that's been mixed with the charcoal ash to act as an insulator. When it's completely covered, it's lit. For the next 20 days, the carver and I will keep watch, night and day, to make sure nothing goes wrong. Paolo took us to a mound that was almost ready to harvest. You'll notice that there are holes in the top and bottom. These are opened and closed depending upon the wind and other atmospheric conditions. The ones at the top are burning bluish. It means that the charcoal is almost ready. The bottom ones are white, meaning it has to burn some more. And this sound is like hollow, so oh, yes. it means that the charcoal is it's good. It's good. More metallic is the sound, more quality are uh, charcoal. And somebody with charcoal burner test. They the test it like this. like this. Sadly, this way of life is disappearing. Paolo is one of just a few remaining carboni, and when they are gone, the trade will exist no more. On our last night, we were treated to a feast prepared by the Academia de Padlo a group of men who have gotten together once a week for 20 years to cook. In all my years of travel to Italy, I have never had such a fascinating, authentic trip, meeting so many wonderful people as I did in La Marca, and especially in Mercatello Sul Mataro. And a big thanks to Palazzo Donati for hosting me.